Welcome to this digital seminar on how to use Microsoft Teams. I'll be telling you what is MS Teams, why do we use MS Teams, how do you access MS Teams, how do you use chat to create a chat group, send a message, share a file, add a website, start a video meeting, how you use the search and command bar within MS Teams, how you create a virtual meeting, and the Teams function in MS Teams. Firstly, what is Microsoft Teams? Teams is a turbocharged chat, messaging, and file sharing all rolled into one. It gives you access to virtual meetings, a new ability for collaborative working, and many powerful extras that you can select and customize. Why use MS Teams? Firstly, it brings everything into one place. I believe it will replace email as our core business process, reducing the tyranny of email, allowing you to focus on the task and not the latest random email to pop into your inbox. It replaces the long feedback loop of sending out an email and then waiting for a reply with a short feedback loop of chat. It prevents the reply all blizzard that we sometimes experience. Teams is a powerful collaboration platform. It enables you to have a single version of a document which you can all see and all work on at the same time, what Microsoft calls co-authoring. And you can share comments as you go along. But don't worry, you can see earlier versions and track changes as they're made. It reduces duplication and simplifies. MS Teams will enable you to find information quickly, share knowledge and best practice across networks, accelerate solution finding for service problems, and work more effectively with people from other teams and departments on a common project. How do you access MS Teams? If you look on the far right, you see the blue icon, which is the standard MS Teams icon in both Windows and Mac products. Search for Microsoft Teams. If you use the term Teams, it may not appear. Or download the software. And once you've activated, pin it to your taskbar. In an iPad, download Microsoft Teams application and then run. If, however, you're not able to do this, go to office.com and sign in using your NHS email and if it's a private computer, click the checkbox, enter your password, and log in in the usual way. This is the screen that you'll see on the left-hand side of the standard functions within Microsoft Teams. At the bottom, circled in red, you see the help function. When you click on this, you'll have the option of watching a variety of videos about functions in MS Teams. But note, not all the functions are available to the NHS version of MS Teams. And that's the reason for the training today. If, however, you're stuck and you want ideas on how to use some of the functions, or even wonder what you might be missing out and not using, this is a great place to look. When you open MS Teams, you'll see the standard functions on the left-hand side. Activity, Chat, Teams, Calls and Files. Throughout MS Teams, you'll see the three dots. These are also known as ellipses. These are context-specific ability to change the functions of the area where you click them. And in this case, you can add other functions to your left-hand bar. When you open Teams on an iPad or an iPhone, or other mobile devices, you'll see the functions set out on the bottom. In this case, you can just see Activity, Chat, Teams, Calls and Files without the option of adding additional functionality. Next, I'm going to take you through the key MS Teams functions, beginning with Calls. And in MS Teams, think of this as your contact list. When you click on the Calls function, you'll see in the speed dial 
rectangles containing the contact details of the people that you are in contact with on a regular basis. Microsoft Teams will automatically pull the names of people into this speed dial list. If you can't see the person you want to contact, type their name to find their contact details. Underneath the calls you can see other views of your contact list. This is the speed dial view and this is the contact view. When you're in the speed dial view you'll see each of your contacts displayed separately. If we look at Peter's contact in detail, you'll see here there are two icons indicating his availability. The green circle with the tick indicates that he's available and the phrase available is a customizable statement on how to contact him and his availability. You can see the camera icon circled in red and if you click on this, you can have an instant video conference with the person. Throughout Microsoft Teams, you'll see these three dots, also known as ellipses. When you click on these three dots, you can access additional functionality. In this case, the ability to remove the person from your speed dial group, the ability to open an instant one-to-one -one chat, and the ability to remove the person from a broader group. In order to change your status to the outside world, identify your icon in the top right hand side, circled here in red. In my case, it's my picture, but in yours, to begin with, it'll show your initials. Click on this icon and you'll see your status open up. To change the picture, click on your initials and you'll be invited to upload your picture to MS Teams. To change your availability, click on the availability line and you'll have the option of indicating if you're available, busy, do not disturb, write back or appear away. You can reset your status. Normally, Microsoft Teams identifies your status from your NHS mail calendar. To set your status message, click on the set status message line and you'll be invited to insert your status including the option of directing people to other members of your team. Next I'm going to show you the chat function in MS Teams. you'll be presented with a list of groups on the left hand side. To create a new chat group, go to the pen and paper icon to the left of the search and command bar at the top of your screen. You'll be invited to start typing a name or group. And in this case, I'm going to add Natalie. And Anita. I want to name this group to reflect the content, which in this case is project administration. So I click on the downward arrow to create a new name. And now I go down to the bottom to type a message. If I want a simple one line message, I can type it in the message and then hit the aeroplane, paper per aeroplane icon to the right hand side. But if I wish to create a more sophisticated message, Hit the A with the paint icon underneath and you'll be presented with a range of formatting options. Bold, italic, underline, strike through, highlight, font change, paragraph, indenting, bullet points and links. If you want to discard your message, simply press, press the trash can symbol. So in this case, I'm going to let Anita and Natalie know just to ignore this message. Say I want to add more fancy formatting. I have the option <coughs> of changing the priority of the message. All messages will be sent as standard unless you prioritize them as important, in which case they'll be marked as such. If it's an emergency, 
you can indicate that the message is urgent and the person will receive a notification through every device where they're logged into Teams every two minutes for 20 minutes. This should only be used when there is an emergency. And in this case, I'm going to send this as a standard message. I've also got the option of adding a file from my OneDrive or my computer, adding an icon, a GIF, other images, or a praise function. So I've completed my message. I'm now going to send the, the uh, send icon. So I'm going to click it, and the message is gone. The next function is the search and command bar. This is located at the top of your screen, circled here in red. Say you want to find a document, in this case called report. You enter your keywords in the search bar, press return, and then you can look either within the message filter, the people filter, or the files filter. And in this case, the report is located in the files filter. Alternatively, you want to carry out a quick shortcut command. Forward slash gives you the options, and in this case, you can set your status, indicate your away, and other functions that give you a quick control over the functioning in MS Teams. Next, I'm going to show how to create a virtual meeting. There are a couple of methods. The quickest method is to create a chat group, as I showed you before. And in that chat group, click the video icon, which is the camera to the left of the phone icon indicated here. This will provide an instant video call to everybody in the group at the same time. One way is to put this in as a diary appointment for everybody and then to call them at that time. The second method, in Outlook, go into your diary and select a new Teams meeting. For many people, this may not be visible if you don't have Office 2016. If it isn't visible, <clears throat> go to Meeting, not Appointment, and then select Teams meeting. This will create an appointment with the location as Microsoft Teams. If you don't have this function, use the chat function. Also remember delegates can create meetings for Microsoft Teams in the usual way. All NHS Mail users have Teams and so can join team meetings, but others will have to sign in with a Microsoft account. When it comes time for the meeting, look for the Join Microsoft Teams meeting at the bottom and click on this to join the meeting. When you're in your Teams video conference, you'll see at the bottom this black bar with the red square at the right hand side. These are your controls while you're in the video conference. On the far left, you can see a gray count up number, which gives you the duration of the meeting. Next is a camera icon. Click on this to toggle your camera on and off. Next is a microphone. Click on this to mute and unmute your microphone. It's good practice to mute yourself in a meeting unless you're speaking. Next is an icon of a square box with an arrow going into the box. This is the icon to share your screen. When you click on this icon, you'll be given a choice of which part of the screen or whole screen you choose to share. The next is the in-function context-specific three dots, also known as ellipses, which allow you to change your settings whilst in the conference. The next is the chat function, which allows you to talk either collectively or privately to other attendees in the meeting. And the next is a double person icon, which allows you to view who else is in the meeting, but also to add participants. And finally, you have the red square box with the telephone handle. Click on this to leave the meeting.
when you're in the meeting, if you're having a problem with how you appear or what you can hear or people hearing you, you may need to alter your device settings. Click on the three dots, the triple ellipses, and go to the cogwheel, show device settings. When you click on this, you'll see the option of device settings. First, select the audio device. Video conferencing works best when you have a USB device, USB headset connected to your computer. And in this case, I'm using a Plantronics Audio 400 DSP, which gives me excellent audio quality. Next, select the microphone, which is usually the same device, and finally the camera. The Teams function in MS Teams. In MS Teams, the word team is used in three different ways. The first is the usual use of the word team, a group of people, you and your team. Next, we have Microsoft Teams shown here with the blue icon. That's the software program. Finally, within Teams, we have uppercase Teams. Teams is a way of supporting a selection of people working in an area or on a project that has medium to large scope or medium to long-term permanence. When you click on the Teams icon within MS Teams, you'll see the teams that you've been allocated to. When you first join MS Teams, you may not be a member of a team. And if so, speak to your team manager to ask to be invited. Here is the team digital aspirant. A team is a collection of up to 200 channels. And a channel is like a chat function with no call or video option but with lots of extra functions and choice around notification. So here's the Richmond Wellbeing Service team. You can see here that we have several channels. The channel belonging to myself, Herbert and Natalie has a padlock indicating that it is a private channel only visible to channel members. And in this case, it's myself, Herbert and Natalie. You can have a maximum of 20 private channels with controlled membership, which are invisible to non-members. When you set up a channel, you can choose the degree to which you can have items like GIFIs, stickers, and customized memes. For some channels, for example, those that have been used externally, these may not be appropriate, but your team administrator can decide on this. Every team has a general channel. Often this can be used to advise the team on how best to use this particular team. And in each channel, you'll see tabs across the top. Posts, which is like a chat function. Files, where you can upload files. Wiki. And in this case, I've added an Excel function and a shortcut to this website. On Microsoft Teams. Try to limit the number of tabs to five otherwise they collapse but it's fine to have more if you need to. To upload a shared file click file and then you have two options. Either drag and drop the file into the space beneath files or click the upload select the files and click Upload. So what's the difference between calls, chat, channels and teams? Frequent video calls and video meetings are a great way to collaborate and support each other. Use these liberally and every person who has access to MS Teams can set up their own calls and their own chats as much as they like. Chat. These are private and appropriate if other team members don't need to see the information in the chat. Again, you set up the chat and you can control who else is in your chat group. Teams are always a collection of channels. 
channels, unless they're private, are visible to all members of the team. All files and all folders are accessible to all members of the team. Channels have added functionality. When you're sending a message, remember, avoid copying everyone, blind copies and items that are only for information. Because if the person is a member of the channel or the team, they'll see the message when they next review the channel. If, however, you want the person to carry out a specific action, use the at function followed by their name to draw their attention to the action that you want them to take. As we outlined early, earlier, in the same way that in the chat function elsewhere, you can select the priority, within Teams, you can also set the priority as standard, important or urgent. Remember only to use urgent when there's an emergency. file storage and sharing in MS Teams. This can be quite confusing, so I'm going to go through it to help people understand the different functions. What we currently use are network drives or H drives, which are personal drives, shared department drives, for example, K drives, or also known as I drives, and the trust internet. In Teams, these become the OneDrive, where the personal drive is the equivalent of the OneDrive and when you have a chat you can only share files from the OneDrive. The shared department drive corresponds to the Teams function so each team has its own folder and then the Trust Internet could be put on SharePoint although at the moment we don't have any plans to do that. The underlying technology, however, is the same throughout the program. All the files and folders are shared on the program SharePoint, but what differs is the permissions that each people have, each person has. So for example, OneDrive, only that person can access their area of SharePoint. And when you open this up, you'll see it's labeled as SharePoint forward slash personal. For SharePoint forward slash the team name, other members of the team can see that shared folder. And when SharePoint is published as an external site, everybody within the organization can usually see that domain unless it's restricted. So how does this work in practice? Well, when you create a document, you have a choice. You can create a document in the usual way using Office 365 and OneDrive, and you store it on your OneDrive, and only you can see that document, whether it's a Word document, PowerPoint, Excel. However, you now have the choice to create a document within Teams, within one of the channels. If you do that, everybody can see that document. Once the document's shared on Teams, everybody can work on that document, but you still have the option to see earlier versions and to message, as well as track changes. Once it's complete, you can show that to the other parts of the team, but it can only be shared through SharePoint through the whole organization. So you want to share a document that you've completed. To do that, click the ellipses on the right of the document. You'll see a set of options, click share, and this gives you the choice as to how you share this document or this file with other people in the NHS. Now, Microsoft Teams within the NHS has been configured in such a way that you cannot share documents or items outside the NHS. You can, however, share documents or items or files with anybody with an NHS email. You can also share it to people with an existing access or specific people and depending on how you want this document to work, you can also allow editing. When you want to open a document in MS Teams, you have a choice. Either click on the document line or click on the ellipses, and then you have a choice to edit the document within Teams, open the document in a browser, 
or open it in the desktop application. The latter may not work without Office 365. I advise against downloading the document unless you deliberately want to create duplicates. It's easier to open the document within Teams or in a browser or within a desktop app because everybody within your team can work on that document at the same time and there's no confusion around the version control of the document. So as you can see here in Teams, click the ellipses to the right, then open and then choose a method. If you have Wi-Fi connection, there's no need to sync documents. One of the great strengths of Teams is the ability for several members of the team to work on the same document at the same time. And if you're concerned about getting confused over who's done what, you can turn on track changes and look at previous versions of the document if you want to. Getting going. So I suggest that you aim to have one team for your team and then add extra teams as you go along. They should be organized around a defined purpose and you should be, clear, be able to clearly say what the task is, the problem or the program. Ensure that your team name is readable by humans, avoid using code and put the important names first as most folk can only see the first 15 characters. If people outside the organization will be invited, prefix the name to ext, open square brackets, ext, close square brackets for external so that we know that there'll be guests present. If you need multiple private channels due to information security needs, consider having multiple teams where the second or third second team perhaps is specifically for confidential material. It's okay if you find some of your channels aren't being used that's fine, just recycle them for something else. The channels are organized alphabetically. If you want some channels pulled to the top, consider putting a number at the start or an emoji that represents the function of that channel and that'll pull it to the top of the list. Aim for about three to seven priority channels with some supporting channels. What do we mean by supporting channels? Well. You have one already, which is the general channel, which is usually used for advising other team members on how this particular team works together, communicates and resolves issues. Another supporting channel might be, for example, social and fun, organising social and fun activities. Some of the more relaxed chat might occur in this channel away from the other work areas. You might also want to think about a channel that has the week that was, learning or things that are broke. That need to be fixed. Finally, download the Teams app onto your phone and use the Quiet Hours function to switch off notifications. Try adding a OneNote tab into your channel to help organize some of the information. Interestingly, the OneNote function is slightly more powerful than the Wiki function, so you may find this easier to use. Finally, here are some further resources that you might find helpful. Take a screenshot of this, particularly the Teams overview provided by Microsoft is particularly helpful. Thank you.